Hello everyone, I am Divya, your math facilitator. In this video, we shall learn few problems based on chapter 1 of class 10. Okay, so the concepts of chapter 1 of class 10 I have already explained you. So you can find the videos by clicking on the i button. So now let's get started. Here is the first question. You have to define Euclid's division lemma. So what is it? If A and B are any positive integers, okay, so there exist Q and R, okay, such that A is equal to B Q plus R, okay, simple division. Suppose you have 30 divided by 5, yes, so if you divide 30 by 5, what do you get? 5, 6 are 30 and the remainder is 0. Yes, the same thing you can write it as 30 is equal to 6 into 5 plus 0. Okay, nothing but dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. Okay, the same thing we are writing here. This is dividend, A is dividend, B is divisor, Q is quotient and R is reminder. And always this reminder is 0 less than or equal to R less than B. Okay, so reminder can be either 0 or it should be a number less than B, less than the divisor. Clear? So this is called Euclid's division lemma. So you have to find the HCF of 900 and 270. So how do you do that? Using Euclid's division lemma. Okay, so now what is Euclid's division lemma? A is equal to BQ plus R. Yes, so now firstly for A, the value of A you always take the bigger number. Okay, here A is equal to 900. And what is B? B is 270. Okay. Now the values of Q and R you can find by simple division. Okay. So 270. So 900 divided by 270. Okay. 273 is R 810. Okay. So subtracting the remainder is 90. Now 90 is less than 270. R is less than B. Yes. So you'll stop your division here. So this thing you can write in the form of Euclid's division lemma. How? So 900 is equal to, so we have taken A as 900 is equal to, what is B? B is 270 into, what is Q? Quotient is 3. Plus the reminder is what? 90. Okay. Now for the next part, this will be A and this will be B. Okay. So A is 270 and you will divide by what? You will divide by 90. Okay. Now let us divide here. 270 divided by 90. Yes, so 93 is 270 and the remainder is 0. Yes, the same thing you can write here in 90 into 3 plus 0. Okay, now when the remainder is 0, you will stop your division. Okay, you will stop this process here and you will take this value of B as a HCF. Okay, now this is nothing but A is equal to B Q plus R. It is in the form of A is equal to B Q plus R. So this is the value of B. So simply you will take the value of B as HCF. So HCF is 90. Clear? Moving so, on to our next question. You have to use Euclid's division lemma to find that square of any positive integer is of the form 3p, 3p plus 1. Okay. So how do you do that? Now firstly, what is Euclid's division lemma? It is nothing but if a and b are two integers, two positive integers, then you can write a is equal to bq plus r. Yes, where r is greater than or equal to 0 and it is less than b. Yes, so this is the condition. Now, let us take B as 3. Okay, why? Because you can see that it is in the form of B, Q plus R. Okay, the thing you have to prove, this expression is in the form of B, Q plus R. So, we will take B as 3. Okay, so comparing Euclid's division lemma and we have to prove this. So comparing these two, you can find that in the place of B, you have 3. So that is the reason you will take B as 3. Now it depends on the question. If in the question you have something else in this place, then you will take that as B. Okay, so now continuing. Now A is equal to substituting B equal to 3 in this Euclid's division lemma. It is 3Q plus R. Okay, now R can take values as 0, 1, 2. Okay, why? Because R should be less than B. Now here B is what? B is 3. So R should take value from 0 to a number less than 3. So it can take 0, 1 and 2. Okay, it cannot take 3 because R should be less than B and here B is 3. Okay, now take this as equation 1. Okay, and in this equation 1, you have to substitute the values of R and check for the given conditions. Clear? So now when R equal to 0. 
what happens let let this be the case one when r is equal to 0 equation 1 becomes a is equal to 3q plus 0 yes so a is nothing but 3q clear now after this step we have to square this okay so squaring on both the sides squaring on both the sides now why are we squaring because in the question they asked us to find the square of any positive number okay positive integer so you have to square if in the question it is given that cube of any positive integer is of this form then you have to cube here okay so completely depends on the question since you are asked to find square of any positive integer you are squaring it clear so now squaring this it is a square is equal to 3 q whole square okay so a square is equal to 3 square into q square so this is 3 into 3 3 square is nothing but 3 into 3 into q square okay now i want to take 3 as common why because i want to bring this in the form of 3p okay so taking 3 as common you have 3 q square you are left out with 3 q square okay okay let 3 q square be p okay since you have to prove it as 3p now take this 3q square as p okay now what is a square a square is nothing but 3 now this is p we have considered this as p so a square is nothing but 3p okay so the square of any positive integer is of the form 3p you have proved this now what is the case 2 you have to take r equal to 1 okay you have taken r equal to 0 now let us take what is r equal to 1 okay so when you take r equal to 1 this equation becomes a is equal to 3q plus 1 clear now what do you do you square okay so squaring gives you a square is equal to 3q plus 1 whole square clear so a square is equal to you know the formula of a plus b whole square it is nothing but a square plus b square plus 2a into b right so a square is equal to 3q whole square plus 1 square is nothing but 1 plus 2 into 3q into 1 okay it gives you 2 into 3q okay let us rearrange it and write it here now this is nothing but 3 square q square plus 2 into 3q plus 1 okay 1 i am writing it at the end okay now here in this step let us take 3 as common okay so 3 common from these two terms if you take so here it is 3 square which means 3 into 3 okay so 1 3 you are taking it as common so you are left out with other 3 and you have a q square here okay plus now you are taking 3 common from this you are left with 2q okay and you have plus 1 separately clear now this is nothing but now consider this complete term as p okay so considering this as p so it is 3 p plus 1 clear so considering this entire thing as p it is 3 p plus 1 so a square is 3 p plus 1 square of any integer now let us take the last case in the last case you have r equal to 2 so case 3 when r equal to 2 okay so what is this equation it is a is equal to 3 q plus 2 clear now you will square okay squaring on both the sides what do you get a square is equal to 3 q plus 2 whole square okay so a square is equal to this is of the form a plus b whole square so it is a square plus b square plus 2 a b okay so this is nothing but 3 square into q square plus 4 plus 2 into 3 q into 2 okay so fr from this let us rearrange the terms so it is 3 3 square q square plus 2 into 3 into q into 2 plus 4 okay plus now this 4 you can write it as 3 plus 1 do you agree yes so now again you can take 3 common from this term this term and this term okay so taking 3 common you are left out with 1 3 here 1 3 and q square plus here you are taking 3 common so you are left out with 2 2 is a 4 and q plus here also you are taking 3 common so you are left out with 1 ok plus 1 is separate clear so this is nothing but 3 into this entire thing you take it as p ok so it is 3p plus you have a 1 here 
okay so even when you took r equal to 1 you got it as 3p plus 1 when you took r equal to 2 also you got it as 3p plus 1 and when you took r equal to 0 you got it as 3p okay so any positive integer the square of any positive integer is of the form 3p and 3p plus 1 this is how you prove it clear now the next question is you have to check whether 6 power n ends with the digit 0 for any natural number n okay so for this let us take some cases let us take n equal to 1 okay since they said that n is a natural number so we are we are starting from 1 okay so n is equal to 1 what is 6 power n 6 power n is nothing but 6 power 1 so 6 power 1 is 6 okay when you take n equal to 1 6 power 1 is 6 now when you take n equal to 2 what is 6 power n it is 6 square okay so it is 36 clear now when you take n equal to 3 it is 6 cube okay n equal to 3 it is 6 cube so 6 cube is nothing but 216 okay so in this way if you continue what is the last digit you are getting the ones place you are getting 6 so whatever the value of n it is okay you can take n any value of n for any value of n the last digit for 6 power n will always be 6 okay it cannot be 0 now moving on to the next question you have to show that any positive integer is of the form 6 q plus 1 6 q plus 3 6 q plus 5 okay so how do you do that again using euclid's division algorithm okay so what is it a is equal to b q plus r okay euclid's division lemma states that a is equal to b q plus r where a and b are some integers some positive integers okay so comparing these two expressions now you compare this with b q plus r 6 q plus 1 with b q plus r you can see that b is equal to 6 yes comparing it so b equal to 6 in all the cases so let us take b equal to 6 okay as i explained in earlier problem also now let a be any positive integer okay let a be any positive what do we want we want positive odd integer okay so that positive odd integer b a okay so let a be any positive odd integer and the value of b you are taking is 6 okay so now substituting this in euclid's division lemma what do you get a is equal to b is nothing but 6 q plus r okay and this value of r can be now what are the values of r you know that r is greater than or equal to 0 and it is less than b yes and here the value of b is 6 so r is a value less than 6 okay so it can be 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so r is 0 1 2 3 4 and it is less than 6 so we are stopping till 5 clear now here also you mark this as equation 1 okay and we'll take case 1 okay we'll substitute all these values of r in this equation clear now when r equal to 0 what happens to this a is equal to 6 q okay so a is equal to now 6 q you can write it as 2 into 3 q yes so it is nothing but 2 into now this 3 q you consider it as p okay so a is 2 p 2 p is nothing but a even number do you agree this is even yes now let us take what is r equal to 1 okay what happens if r equal to 1 let me do it here when r is equal to 1 what happens to this equation so it is nothing but a is equal to 6 q plus 1 okay so this is nothing but this this 6 q i can write it as 2 into 3 q plus 1 yes now this 2 into 3 q is an even number so this is even okay and you are adding 1 to this even number so what do you get this is odd okay so 2 into 3 q plus 1 is odd okay now let us take r equal to 2 clear so when r is equal to 2 this is a is equal to 6 q plus 2 yes now you can take 2 common from these two now if you take 2 common it is 3 q plus 1 yes since you are taking 2 common this is nothing but 2 into 3 so you are taking 2 common you are left out with 3q ok so a is equal to 2 into now this you can take it as p yes now this is nothing but again it is even do you agree yes so when r equal to 2 you get a even integer now let us take the next case when r equal to 3 ok so when r equal to 3 this is nothing but a is equal to 6q plus 3 
yes it is 6 cube plus this 3 can you can write it as 2 plus 1 yes so it is nothing but now if you take 2 common it is 3 cube plus 1 if you're taking 2 common from this you're left out with 1 and you have a plus 1 okay so it is 2 now take this complete thing as p okay it is 2p plus 1 now 2p plus 1 2p is even you are adding 1 to even so this becomes what it becomes odd okay now let us take the next case fifth case when r is equal to 4 okay when r is 4 this is nothing but a is equal to 6 q plus 4 okay so it is nothing but if you take 2 common from this it is 3 q plus 2 okay so this entire thing you can write it as p so this is 2p is nothing but it is an even integer clear now let us take the last case when r is equal to 5 okay when r is 5 a is equal to 6q plus 5 yes now here also you can write it as 6q plus 4 plus 1 5 you can write as 4 plus 1 so taking 2 common it is 3q plus 2 plus 1 okay so it is 2 let us consider this as p plus 1 okay now 2p is even you are adding 1 so it becomes odd okay now check where where in which case did we get odd numbers here you got even when r is equal to 1 you got a odd integer and a is 6q plus 1 okay the corresponding a is 6q plus 1 okay now when r is 2 you got even integer so leave it when r equal to 3 you got odd odd integer okay so when r equal to 3 what was the value of a it was 6q plus 3 okay now when r is equal to 4 you got a even so you leave it when r equal to 5 what did you get you got a odd integer yes so the value of a is 6q plus 5 okay so this is the proof you have shown that a odd positive integer is of the form 6q plus 1 6q plus 3 6q plus 5 moving on to the next problem you have to prove using euclid's division lemma that cube of any positive integer is of the form 9m 9m plus 1 and 9m plus 8 okay so now again you take euclid's division lemma it is a is equal to b cube plus r where r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b okay so now let a be the positive integer okay so let a be the positive integer and you have to prove that cube of this positive integer is of the form 9m 9m plus 1 9m plus 8 okay so now what are the values of r r can take values from 0 to b okay it should be less than b now what is the value of b comparing these two expressions you can see that b is 9 okay so take b as 9 and what are the values of r r can take values from 0 to a number less than 9 okay it should be less than b so b is 9 so it should be less than 9 so it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so now for all the values of r you have to find okay so now a is equal to substituting the value of b in euclid's division lemma it is 9 q plus r let this be equation 1 okay now you'll substitute each of the value of r in this equation to find if the cube of any positive integer is of this form or not okay so case 1 let us take r equal to 0 okay so when r is 0 a is equal to 9 q plus 0 so a is nothing but 9 q yes now we want cube of any positive integer so what do you do you cube on both the sides okay cubing on both the sides what do you get a cube is equal to 9 q whole cube okay so a cube is equal to now this is nothing but 9 cube into q cube yes so a cube is equal to 9 if you take common so it is 9 square into q cube okay so it is 9 now let us consider this 9 square into q cube as m okay so it always depends on the question okay whatever letters are used in the question you will consider that okay so 9 square into q cube since m is given in the question you will consider it as m clear so a cube equal to m clear so one you have proved one step is done now let us take what happens if r equal to 1 okay case 2 so when r equal to 1 a is equal to 9 q plus 1 
yes so cubing what happens a cube is equal to 9 cube plus 1 whole cube okay so a cube is equal to now what is a plus b whole cube it is nothing but a cube plus b cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square yes so let us expand this so it is a cube plus b cube plus 3a square b plus 3 a b square okay so this is the expansion of a plus b whole cube so now let us solve it it is 9 cube into q cube okay you don't solve the value of 9 cube let it be like that only because we'll take common anyway okay so we'll not waste time in calculations okay so 1 cube is 1 plus 3 into this is 9 square into q square okay i'm just separating the exponents plus 3 into 1 square is 1 so let us write 9 cube okay even if you multiply with 1 it is the same number so this is nothing but now out of all these terms you can find 9 as common so i'll write this one to the end okay so 9 cube into q cube plus 3 into 9 square into q square plus 3 into 9 q finished now you have to write 1 at the last clear so taking 9 common what is left out here 9 cube is nothing but 9 into 9 into 9 okay so 1 9 you are taking common so you are left out with 2 9 so it is 9 square into q cube plus here also 1 9 you are taking common so you are left out with how many nines 1 9 so it is 3 into 9 into q square okay here 1 9 you are taking common so you are left out with 3 into q clear plus 1 clear so you consider this entire thing as what M. So, when you consider this entire thing as M, you are left out with 9M plus 1. Clear? So, A cube is equal to 9M plus 1. Okay? So, now let us take what if R is equal to 2. Okay? So, case 3, when R is equal to 2, what happens? Now, A is equal to 9Q plus 2. Okay, now cubing a cube is equal to 9 cube plus 2 whole cube. Okay, again expanding it in this way, it is 9 cube into q cube plus 2 cube plus 3 into 9 q square into 2 plus 3 into 9 q into 2 square. Okay, using the identity a plus b whole cube. Okay, so this is nothing but now here also you can see 2 cube will write at the end. Okay, so 9 cube into q cube plus 3 into 9 square q square okay into 2 also you have into 2 plus 3 into 9 q into 2 square is nothing but 4 okay plus you have a 2 cube it is nothing but 8 clear so this is nothing but 9 if you take common you are left out with 9 square q q plus 3 into 9 into 2 into q square plus 3 into q into 4 okay and you have a plus 8 here okay so this is nothing but 9 if you take common and consider this entire thing as what m so considering it as m you have a plus 8 at the end okay so 8 cube is 9 m plus 8 clear so now when you take r equal to 3 okay now case 4 when r is equal to 3 what happens let us see already we have proved that it can be of 9 m 9 m plus 1 and 9 m plus 8 now let us take what happens if r equal to 3 so it is a is equal to b b is nothing but 9 9 q plus r is 3 okay now cubing a cube equal to 9 q plus 3 whole cube okay it is nothing but 9 cube into q cube plus 3 cube plus 3 into 9 q square into 3 plus 3 into 9 q into 3 square okay so this is nothing but now you can see in every term you have 9 okay so 3 cube is nothing but 9 into 3 do you agree because 3 cube can be written as 3 into 3 into 3 okay so 3 into 3 is 9 so you can write as 9 into 3 okay so now taking 9 as common from all the terms so it is 9 square q cube plus here also it is 3 cube if you take 9 common what are you left out with you are left out with 3 okay plus here it is 3 into 9 into q square into 3 
प्लस थ्री इंटू क्यू इंटू थ्री स्क्वेर ओके टेकिंग नाइन कॉमन फ्रॉम ऑल द टर्म्स सो दिस एंटायर थिंग यू कैन कंसिडर इट एस एम सो दिस इज नथिंग बट नाइन एम ओके सो ए क्यू बी इज नथिंग बट नाइन एम ओके अगेन यू गॉट द फर्स्ट रिलेशन क्लियर सो नाव इफ यू टेक आर इक्वल टू फोर ऑल्सो यू विल गेट दिस वन If you take r equal to five, you will get this relation. Okay, that means this is repeating. Clear? So now we have already proved that when r equal to zero, a cube is nine m. When r equal to one, a cube is nine m plus one. When r equal to two, a cube is nine m plus eight. Okay? So cube of any positive integer. Since why why are we cubing here? Because in the question they ask us to cube. Okay? Cube of any positive integer is of the form nine m. 9m plus 1 and 9m plus 8. It is proved here. Okay, so you don't have to continue these steps. You can stop it here. Clear? So what are we doing? You will get a problem in this way. This is a definite question for your board exam. So how will you do it? So firstly, whenever a question like this is given to you, you will firstly compare these two and you will find the value of b. Okay? Now value of r is nothing but from zero a number less than b. Okay, so substituting all these cases of R, you will try to find out the relations which are asked. Clear? So now, if they are asking cube of any number, you will cube it. If they are asking square of any number, you will square it here in this step. Okay? Or else, if they are asking a positive odd number or a positive even number, so depending on the question, you will find whether it is odd or even. So we have covered all the different model of problems which can be asked. Okay? This model of problems which can be asked for your board exams. Now the next question is you have to find the LCM and HCF of these numbers by Prime factorization method. Okay, in the starting of this session, we have found HCF of numbers using Euclid's division method. Okay, but here you will find using prime factorization method. This you have already done in your previous classes also. So, what is prime factorization method? Firstly, you will convert these numbers into prime factors. Okay, so prime factorization of twelve is nothing but two six are twelve, two three is a Three ones are okay. So twelve can be written as two into two into three. Clear? Now fifteen. Let us prime factorize fifteen. Fifteen can be written as three five zero five one zero. Okay. So fifteen is three into five. Okay. Now let us write twenty one. Twenty one can be prime factorized as seven three zero three one zero. Okay. So it is seven into three. Clear? Now I want to find the HCF of these three numbers. How do you get the HCF of these numbers? You will take the numbers which are common. Okay? So here you have three, three and three. So three is common in all the prime factors. So write three. Okay? Now is there any other factor which is common? No. So three is the HCF of twelve, fifteen and twenty-one. Clear? Now LCM is nothing but product of All the factors, okay, factors with the greatest power, okay. So here you can see three is the common factor in all the numbers, okay. So write three, okay. And the greatest power of three is only one, okay. You have three only ones in all the factors, okay. In two, now you can see two. How many times it, you do have two here? You have two times, so it is two square in two, and you have a five and seven here. Okay, so the common factors you will write only the greatest power of the common factor. Okay, and you'll multiply all the other factors. Clear? So this is nothing but three into four into five into seven. Okay, so three fours are twelve, twelve fives are sixty, sixty sevens are four twenty. Okay, so LCM of twelve, fifteen, and twenty-one is four twenty. Now the second bit of this question is you have to find the LCM and HCF of seventy-two and one hundred eight. Okay, so the given numbers are seventy-two and one hundred eight. Now what is the prime factorization of seventy-two? So two threes are six. You are left out with one. Two six are twelve. Two two ones are two. You are left out with one. Two eights are sixteen. Two nines are Three threes are three ones are so seventy two can be written as two into two into two into three into three so two into two into two into three into three okay now one not eight prime factorization is two fives are ten two fours are eight okay and two twos are four you are left out with one two sevens are fourteen. Three nines are twenty-seven. Three threes are nine, and three ones are three. Okay, so one not eight. You can write it as two into two into three into three into three. Two into two into three into three into three. 
okay so now the hcf hcf is nothing but now the common factors you will take now two is common so you will write two two is common again okay so write two again now here you can see three is common so you will write three and here also three is common so write three okay so it is nothing but two twos are four four threes are twelve twelve threes are 36 so hcf is 36 now what about lcm lcm is nothing but you will take the highest power of the common factors now here in 2 what do you have now this is nothing but 2 cube okay so this you can write as 2 cube into 3 is how many times it is 3 square clear and this you can write as 2 is how many times it is only 2 times so it is 2 square and here 3 is how many times it is 3 times so 3 cube okay now out of these two you will take the highest power okay now it is 2 cube and 2 square here which one you will choose you will choose the highest power 2 cube okay into now it is 3 square and 3 cube so you will choose 3 cube okay you will choose the highest power now 2 cube is 8 into 3 cube is 27 so the LCM is 216 okay now this you can also check how will you check now product of the given numbers is equal to product of LCM and HCM do you remember this yes so the product of the given numbers 72 into 108 is how much that should be equal to 36 into 216 okay so you can check this condition and if it is correct then your LCM and HCF are correct now moving on to the next question you have to explain you have to prove that this is a composite number okay so uh, from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic what is composite number any number which can be expressed as product of prime factors is a composite number yes so nothing but now we have to keep in mind that we have to express this as product okay so now you can see these are product and you have a plus sign in between so our aim should be we should have all multiplication only in the sum okay in our answer so then we can say that since it is a product of prime numbers so this particular number is a composite number using fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay so let us do one problem you will understand so now from this number you can see that there is 13 and 13 in these two terms yes so taking 13 common what do you have if you take 13 common you are left out with 7 into 11 in this term yes you are taking 13 common so you are left out with 7 into 11 in this term plus if you take 13 common in this what is left out here so 13 is nothing but 13 into 1 you are taking 13 common you are left out with 1 okay so this is nothing but 13 into 7 into 11 is 77 plus 1 okay so this is 13 into 77 plus 1 is what 78 now the 78 you can divide it by 2 yes so if you divide it by 2 it is nothing but 2 3s are 6 and you are left out with 1 okay 2 9s are 18 clear so you can see that this number you have expressed as product of prime factors okay so this is product everywhere you see you have a multiplication symbol no additions no subtractions yes so this you have expressed it as product of prime numbers so you can see that this particular number is composite number using what using fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay now this is also a similar type now here also you can see you have all multiplication symbols and you have one addition okay so this complete thing is one term and this is one term okay now let us see if you have anything common in these two terms you have five here and five here yes so take five as common okay whatever is common in the two terms now all this product is one term and wherever you have plus and the next number is the second term okay so you can see five is common in both the terms so taking five common you are left out with seven into six into this five you have written here so into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay and here you are taking 5 common yes so if you take 5 common what happens you are left out with 1 similar step okay here also you took 13 common so you are left out with 1 here you are taking 5 common so you will be left out with 1 okay so this is nothing but 5 into now 7 6 are 42 42 4s are 168 168 3s are 504 504 2s are 1008 so 1008 you have a plus 1 okay so this is nothing but 5 into 1009 okay so 1009 see if you can divide with any number otherwise also this is nothing but 5 into 1009 okay so you express this as product of two numbers 
yes so you are expressing it as product of numbers which means this is nothing but composite number yes what is the definition of composite number composite number has factors more than one and itself yes so if you have more than two factors then here you can see you have more than two factors you have factors 5 one zero zero nine and one is also a factor of this so it has more than two factors so this number is composite number simply you can say that yes so moving on to the next question it is also similar question so ninth question you have to prove that this is a composite number okay so i told you that everything all these products all this multiplication this is one term and after plus whatever you have this is the second term okay so plus divides both the terms clear plus c is separating both the terms now here you can see 753 here is do you have 753 you have 753 okay that means you can take 753 common from both the terms yes so let us take that 753 taking common from both the terms you are left out with 8 so 7 you have taken common 6 5 you took common 4 3 you took common into 2 into 1 okay plus from this term you can see that you have taken all the numbers common 7 5 and 3 so you are left out with 1 okay so this is nothing but 7 into 5 into 3 into 8 into 6 is 48 48 into 4 is 192 192 into 2 is 384 384 into 1 is 384 so it is 384 you have a plus 1 okay so this is nothing but 7 into 5 into 3 into 384 plus 1 is 385 yes again this 385 you can divide it by 5 yes so that is nothing but 7 into 5 into 3 into if you divide this by 5 you have 5 7 are 35 and you are left out with 3 so this is again 7 okay and this 77 also you can write as 11 7 are yes so it is 7 into 5 into 3 into 5 into 7 into 11 so you can see that you have expressed this as product of all prime numbers okay so this particular number is a composite number okay so the next Next question is you have to state fundamental theorem of arithmetic now what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic using the same theorem we have solved the previous problems yes it is nothing but if a number can be expressed as product of prime numbers okay suppose if x is a number if it can be expressed as product of prime numbers okay so this x is called as composite number clear and the prime numbers are unique the order of the prime numbers may be different but these prime numbers are unique set of prime numbers okay so any composite number you can express it as product of prime factors and this prime number is unique and the order may be different the order of these prime numbers may be different but they are unique which means you can write p3 first p1 p2 and so on but they are unique okay you have only one p3 there are no repetition they are unique clear so this is nothing but fundamental theorem of arithmetic i hope this session is very helpful for you so start your class 10 preparation as early as possible and i'm explaining you all the different models of questions which may be asked in your board exams it is always better to start early so give this video a big thumbs up share this video with all your friends let them also learn and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section below or you can tell me how did you like this video in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe i'll meet you with a different set of questions in the next video thanks for watching